fly stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars. Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier, owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes, thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. <laughs> of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Yes, you look like you can take a beating. You've run into your share of lampposts. You have an unnerving talent for reading people. Huh. Nerve damage in your extremities. Oh dear, did you actually punch out your anger, counselor? If you were any more composed, you'd be a symphony. You're about as subtle as the Spacer's Choice mascot. Here, someone vandalized your hibernation chamber. Very low likelihood of explosive cell death. Someone with a talent for exploiting insecurities. I hear monarchs in need of more game hunters.
Working your way up to Provisioner? Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Please power down your engines. Have to be Not likely, bootlickers. <laughs> Initiate skip jump. There you are, wondering what's going on, eh? A bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on Alp have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. 
Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. Not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one-of-a-kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor, so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... Uh, all the colonists are counting on you. should be close by. What in law's name? Is that him? Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. Hawthorne won't mind you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. Hey, you. Come here. You've tried the best now. Now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. Huh. Looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's Choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Oh, we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Not that I deserve to be. Can't even deliver a company slogan. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take them. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean... What are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. 
Spacer's choice policy clearly stipulates that dead and as good as dead are two completely different properties of matter. Unless I'm dead, I'm contractually obligated to attend to my post. I will report that illegally grounded spacecraft if it is the last thing I do. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Yeah, you sound a lot like my lieutenant. Here, hope this gun serves you better than it did me. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time.
Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. I have been programmed to communicate with diplomacy and tact. Please allow me to demonstrate. Jefferson procedures initiated. Disengage the airlocks. Prepare to eject all boarding parties in five, four, three, two, one. You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Excellent. Welcome back, Captain Hawthorne. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the unreliable. Do you understand? Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. I'll be with you, friend. I'm Ernie, from the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. Town sent me hereabouts to check on the guards. Now, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but seems to me they're all dead. Mind telling me what happened here? Oh, cool your thrusters, friend. Just out here doing my trade. Gathering remains, tagging corpses, filing reports. Guess I'd better get to cleaning up. Can't just leave company property scattered about, bleeding out on the dirt. Is that an official Spacer's Choice spacecraft on an official Spacer's Choice landing pad? Do I look like an auto mechanical sanitation unit? The answer to both questions is no. You don't want to amble on over to Edgewater to earliest convenience. Constable's office might have work for someone with your, uh, let's just say, aggressive disposition. Oh, and, uh, be sure to stop by the Edgewater Provisioner for a can of salt tuna. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Don't get paid bits to chat with strangers. You want to chew the rag, go talk to Silas over by the cemetery.
Whoa, hey, where'd you come from? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. You talk too pretty for a marauder. Most of them just grunt and yell. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town, avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls, and low, low prices. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. No, I ain't that fancy. <laughs> I just dig holes in the ground and fill them with dead folk. Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. W what's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? I'll be around if you change your mind. The grease monkey are. Are you crazy? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. You were saying, Miss Holcomb. It's just what Bess needs is a proper refurbish. I I, I can bandage her up and what all, but she's just old. Sorry, I I'm sorry. I'll I'll do better. 
And I do wish you'd stop referring to our cannery as Bess. Personification of company property is strictly contrary to the Spacer's Choice Code of Conduct. My apologies. I am not in the habit of allowing my guests to witness such a row. Now, what can I do for you? I'm Reed Thompson, Outpost Administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Thompson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. The people living in the botanical labs. They're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Good law, no, I don't want you killing anyone, least of all them. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Of course, I understand completely. Here, let me give you the passcode to the geothermal plant. A sign of good faith for so politely listening to me as I ramble on. Are you setting off for the Vale? Because I know my way around. I, I mean, in case you want to guide. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. Great! I got my wrenches, and diagnosticators, and hairpins, and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office. Hey, mister, can we talk? Sorry. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters. On account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. It just... 
You don't seem right to me, mister. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. About if what Mr. Thompson proposes to do is upright. Leaving Miss McDevitt's folk to their fate. Their neighbors. Kim. And maybe he can think of something else to try. Something we ain't. He used to go walking outside town. Maybe he found something that'll help. It's just an idea. That's all.
don't want any trouble. I don't know you. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. Answers, huh? You must be one of those philosophicals. Already got ourselves one of those. Yeah, that's us. And you can tell Thompson we're doing just fine by ourselves. If you're gonna start wandering around my camp, know that I got my sights on you. Over in the hothouse, tending crop. Enough with the questions. No offense, but I've got a lot on my mind. Explains why you're still yammering on at me. No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. Now I'm pacing around wondering if Marauders got to her. It's not like Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. Can't imagine where she's gone. Hale's a wide place. She could be anywhere. Could do without the gallows humor. Thank you. 
Wow, you crossed them all off, like some sort of heroic accountant running down a list. Teach me your ways. Hey, me too. But mostly because I just had my second dose of Adrena time. I am so completely addled right now. You, on the other hand, you were a sight to behold. If I had half your skills, I'd be the greatest outlaw the coast has ever seen. I'm great at clarifying. I don't know. The vital processes that constitute the miracle of life are mysterious and... Oh, you mean around these guys? The marauders wouldn't hurt me. They love me. I'm practically their queen. Yeah, must be my natural charisma. I may have bartered them a few boxes of Adrena time, but yeah, I'm sure that's got nothing to do with it. I got kicked out of... I'd heard some outlaws set up camp in the botanical labs. I decided, instead, what do I find? But a bunch of former workers camped out around a greenhouse. I couldn't just go back to the cannery, so I was stuck with them. I've... Why? Adelaide wants me back on garden duty or something? And no serial dramas. I've been thinking about going back. I'll take my stuff and head on back, I suppose. Grace is going to be glaring knives at me, so I've got that to look forward to. What is it? You want to expand on that? I was hoping you wouldn't say that. I was really hoping. You'd better not be spinning me a story. Yeah. That belonged to her well enough. Guess there's no arguing with you. You pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you. What is it? If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? That'd be the garden, dear. You're standing in a garden. Also fertilizer, so mind your boots. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? 
You should try some of my tobacco tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Reed Thompson? You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. You're doing this for Reed? Why? If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. Cannery's got a regulator. You want... Ch Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down. Workers desert in droves, and our own little camp grows and thrives. You bring power to Reed's town, and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it. He's counting on it.
wanted to poke around in here. The control room should be... Your head somewhere and a touch to the right. Incoming! switches. That'll be easy enough.
Happen to Miss McDevitt's folk if we send power to the veil? You're not real. You're not real. You're not real. You're not real. Real. You're not real. Get away from me, Phantom. Shoot. Scram. You can talk? The Phantom's never talked before. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that sprat raw. See? See, Higgins? This is why you must always boil your sprats before ingesting. No. You can't possibly be a hallucination. You're much too dense. Not at all, my corporeal friend. Higgins is my name. Chester D. Higgins. The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Steam, you're liable to get scalded. Sister, I think Watch out! Send the power to Miss McDevitt. What happens to the where are we headed? Here they come.
I'm not sure what the right is. All I know is the decision that I Once we do this, there's no going. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? If you're sure. I just... I had to ask. He used to follow me around before he left the cannery. Adelaide's okay. Keep your wits about you, friend. Marauders can't see us in the dark. Wild canids, on the other hand. Don't see why Thomas can't just get the generator up and running. Something I can help you with? Nothing. With the power gone, we've got to conserve our supplies. I don't know how much. Keep your. I don't know. Keep your wits about you, friend. I don't. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. Whoa, Miss Parvati. 
Hey, you're, uh, what, um, how, how are you, hi, 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 uh, hello. Are you, uh, uh, Great, just great. I've been trying to keep stuff running, just like you, only I'm not. Oh, gosh, no, I, I'm just along with this fella here. I've seen you wandering around here. You don't look like you're coming from town. Well, what I meant was you're reasonably well-armed and don't look stricken with plague. Sorry, I just wasn't sure if you were from town or if you were one of us. Something's been chewing at me, you see. Fact is, I've been, well... I'll take all the help I can get. I set my mind to learning the craft of the engineer, you see. I want to make something of myself. You ever heard of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering? Comes in a set of three. If I had my hands on one of those data... Those are good. My dad kept a copy. I know the old commute... No kidding! Really? Well, which one? The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible! I appreciate... In fact, I put aside something special on the off chance that somebody would search out those data pads for me. Sure! That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are, chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? Are you really this moronical, or are you just putting on airs? Listen here, Hullhead. I'm only gonna say this once. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. My son worked in that cannery. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered... You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Tell Reed that I can make his pe- Tell him how I've made the- The secret is human corpses. I've been grand. Any luck? I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much used to anybody here. I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. You know something? I think you're right. I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little... It's just... Are you sure about this? If we head back to Edgewater on our own, Adelaide won't... I expect we got no choice. Edgewater needs us back, and, loath as I am to admit it, we need Edgewater. You okay with this, Grace? My fears are all settled. 
Thanks for helping me with Zoe. Just give us some time to gather our personals and say our goodbyes. If you run into Reed, you tell him we're coming back, yeah? This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? That's good enough for me. Adelaide and I have a history. It was unlikely she'd ever come back. But hope springs eternal. We are in your debt. I am authorizing you for a discount on all official Spacer's Choice products, courtesy of the people of Edgewater. By all means. Thomas. Thomas Kemp? I remember him. Had to write him up for daydreaming a few too many times. He tries real hard, Mr. Thompson. You may be right, and with the town set to grow, it is time I invested in a new mechanic. This whole fiasco is not one I am keen on repeating. I was too hard on my own workers. I pushed them to their breaking point. Look, we're a small, poor town on some backwater corner of Terra too. Only way we're surviving the... With more hands at the cannery, I expect productivity will rise. I expect we'll grow. And I expect I can ask corporate to send us some more medicine. We'll survive, one way or another.
Hey, you hear about Wilson? This is where the magic happens. Well, science. But it still happens. Hey, that's... I mean, if you need it. Okay. I think you did the rightest thing you could, sending the power back to Edgewater. Lot. He's just interested in fixing stuff. I'm just glad he's alive. That he's okay. I mean, when Mr. Thompson said he was fired, we all expected the worst. If he wants to learn about engineering, we should help him get those data pads he wants. I'd like to do that for him. A friend of mine died a couple weeks ago. You're not a big drinker, are you? Oh, I almost forgot. I'm contractually obligated to recite company slogans to any visitors. Plague got you feeling woozy? Get yourself boozy with Spacer's Choice. Coming right up. If you're falling sick, I don't want you to.
Not today. Just helping this fella. Not today. Just helping this fella. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Oh, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? 
All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Based on my initial calculations of Dr. Wells's personality, that seems highly unlikely. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying! The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the ground breaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Wrong matter of Shroud, my slow-witted accomplice. This is, uh, how to put it simply, uh, a device that makes you look different, sound different, briefly. The device has its limits, but it will allow you to blend in perfectly and probably won't jeopardize your ability to have children. Will it? No, definitely not. Probably, yes. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. The breaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Can we chat? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson?
If I had to fix a station this big, I'd be spending all my time trying to figure out what... I was thinking that maybe I bought a meter. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else?